much, now I'm swallowed. Hey guys, what's happening? So welcome to the Collins Alternative Podcast. Today, I'm really excited because my wife is going to be interviewing Roger Collins, and he is the apprenticeship coordinator for Siemens Energy, which is a huge company that's based out of Germany. But since they're based in Europe, uh, they a lot of these companies over there have a big, strong tradition of having apprenticeship programs, which is, which is really, really awesome for guys that want to learn while they're on the job. So they don't necessarily have to spend a ton of money going to school to get trained. Instead, they can, well, get an apprenticeship. So uh, he's the coordinator for that program. Um, He's also the chairman for the apprenticeship committee for the state of North Carolina. So he's going to be talking about that as well. And also, because he's the chairman, he also has the ear of the apprenticeship committee at the United States uh, Commerce and Labor and all those other guys up in the D.C. area. So it's really, really cool. My dog's doing something crazy in the back there. But um, anyway, really appreciate you guys uh, listening today. And one quick thing, and I don't really want to sound not necessarily patronizing here because, of course, you guys know this. But every single day, all the time, we're being marketed towards, right? And so um, hopefully you guys aren't really feeling as though we are trying to get something out of out out of you guys for this we're just trying to provide good information to you right we're trying to market this as a maybe a possible alternative going to college that's fine not going to college that's fine too so long as you have a plan right so we're that's all we're trying to do so my wife and I we spawn this idea from the fact of we don't really know um, what the job market's going to be for our kids in 15 years and so we're kind of using this podcast also to explore all these different job opportunities for our kids as well. Um, and so I just really wanted to applaud you guys uh, for thinking along these lines, thinking about alternatives, thinking about the future, thinking about where is my life going to be, what's, what's my game plan. So uh, really appreciate you guys coming along and tagging along with us uh, on this journey that we're, we're uh, discovering uh, with, with my wife and I. So um, hopefully you enjoy the show, guys. And thanks again. Interviews with the best in their fields, teaching you how to excel in careers that don't require traditional college. You're listening to the College Alternative Podcast. Insider tips and advice, straight from the experts. And now, here is your host, James Christian. Well, I am very excited to have Roger Collins on today. He is the um, well, he's wears a lot of hats, apprenticeship coordinator for Siemens, and that's um, under the capacity that we're going to interview him for. Um, but he's got a large background in manufacturing, and um, and has done a lot of work with apprenticeships across the United States. Um, so welcome to the program, Roger. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> All right. So um, my first question I was going to ask was that you know Siemens is a um, it's a German company, right? It's it's based overseas, but it has a lot of offices in the United States. And over in Europe, there's a much larger apprenticeship program. I think there's um, something like 18 times the number of apprenticeships that are started in Europe per capita as compared to the United States. So it's much more common. Um, is that something that Siemens is trying to bring over to the United States in um, in this industry to, to try to get new workers into the workforce? Yes, I think that's absolutely true. Um, one of the ways, like I said before, that we're going to be able to um, replace our aging workforce is through apprenticeships. And Siemens, being a German company, uh, they see the value in it. Uh, in in Europe, uh, especially Germany, Austria, and uh, Switzerland, it's it's ingrained into their DNA, and um, uh, it's it really is a viable and a very effective uh, uh, training tool uh, mm-hmm. to get people. Um, not just a, a college education, but in that on-the-job training, uh, especially in manufacturing. But in Europe, they've really done a great job of, uh, of um, opening up apprenticeship into nearly every uh, job classification that there is. 
So um, that's another thing that I'm advocating for is to uh, open up uh, job opportunities uh, through apprenticeship outside of uh, advanced manufacturing. So if you go into an apprenticeship program, there are a lot of advantages. One of the biggest being that you get paid along alongside your training for a job. But as a um, as an employer or as a, uh, a you know someone who puts on this apprenticeship program, I could think that it would be a lot of additional costs. Is that something that you see as an investment into Siemens, or is it something that you're? Uh, I'm assuming it's not true, but that you're regrettably doing because you're unable to find the qualified workforce, or you know, what is that? What is that motivation there for for Siemens? Uh, honestly, it's a little bit of both. Uh, we started our apprenticeship here uh, in Siemens Charlotte in 2011 uh, in response to uh, the inability to find qualified people out on the open work market. Okay. Um, but the, the reality is, is that uh, apprenticeship really does, um, uh, it, it gives you a much better employee. Um, so you're getting some uh, related instruction, uh, either through the community college system, mm-hmm. that's primarily through the community college system, but you're also getting all the job training. And uh, the, the advantage to apprenticeship is that we're going to pay you uh, your hourly wage, whether you're at work and on the job training or whether you're in class studying. So you're going to get a, a full week's pay. Um, we also pay for tuition and books uh, for your college education. And uh, we see that as it's not a cost. It's definitely an investment. Um, the way that we look at it is, and I'm, I try to be really honest with our apprentices, um, mm-hmm. and I say, listen, what we've done is identified in you certain characteristics that, we make, that make us believe that you would be a good employee uh, in the field that we're training you in. And um, we expect that through your higher education, uh, through your um, uh, more in-depth on-the-job training, that you are going to have a lower cost of uh, non-conformance. Your um, your um, productivity is going to be higher, and your cost of poor quality is going to be lower. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would think, too, if you're training people specifically on the job, that you would have higher retention rates. Is that something that you've seen that you're, you know, you're bringing in the people that you want and training them specifically for, you know, your company that they know the ins and outs of it and and they're loyal to you because you've done all that work and you've invested in them. That is absolutely true. And that, that's one of the, the key uh, and primary motivators for us is that we know that uh, that these individuals, you know, if, if we uh, we de- invest in their development, that they're more likely to stay with us long term. Right. That's great, because a lot of times, you know, I, I think, you know, I don't know, 50 years ago, people would find their company they're going to work for and stick with yeah. it for their lifetime. And now there's a lot more, you know, moving around and variability in in the workforce. And that's hard if you're training people and, and you want to Agreed. use that labor without getting poached or anything like that. Agreed. Yes. Okay. So um, tell me what kinds of apprenticeship programs does Siemens put on? What what are they training people for? What kind of divisions are there? Um, that- we, we have um, uh, multiple sites with apprenticeships. Uh, here in Charlotte is our primary one. Uh, in our blading facility in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, we have a tool and die apprenticeship. Uh, our um, uh, train manufacturing uh, facility in Sacramento, uh, our apprenticeship is in welding. Uh, we have another apprenticeship in Alpharetta, Georgia. Um, and, um, you know, so we have multiple areas. Uh, primarily, it's in manufacturing, mechatronics, and machining. Okay. Um, and then what, um, I don't know, what, what types of people are applying for these apprenticeships? Are they people who already have a background in some of these areas? Or are they people who are coming in, you know, fresh off the ground and, you know, they're learning from scratch from you guys? Uh, it's all of the above. Uh, we recruit from the local high school. So these will be students in high school who show an aptitude uh, for mechanics and mechanical, some mechanical ability, uh, but they don't have, absolutely do not have to have a background in it. We're okay. just looking for certain characteristics that we can develop. Uh, we also go to the community colleges uh, right into their machining programs and mechatronics programs and uh, recruit from there. And uh, one of our largest pools is the veterans group. Uh, so they receive a lot of specialized training in the military and uh, we're able to identify ways that we can uh, align that with what we do here at Siemens. Oh, that's excellent. Now, I'm actually curious because um, you say you're looking for people who, um, and some of them may just be out of high school, but you're looking for people who have some type of a, 
I don't know, some type of edge over other people in, um, in possibly manufacturing or an interest in that. And I think that's interesting because sometimes college is used as that thing to weed people out, whether or not you need those skills. So what, what kind of skills can you, do you look for? How do you assess how someone may or may not be more inclined to work in, um, in that sector? Sure, absolutely. We uh, actually, part of our recruiting process is we bring them out to the factory and uh, we put them to work for a while. Um, mm-hmm. Our recruiting process is nine months long. Uh, it starts out with visits to high schools, to community colleges, and to veterans groups. Uh, we hold an open house in January where they actually get to come out and tour the factory. And uh, we represent the program to them and answer any questions that they may have. Uh, the second step is uh, they have to register at the community college. And uh, there are some things that they have to do for us. That's kind of the first weeding out process. You know, if you're committed enough to get all your paperwork in, uh, then that's the first step in the process. Um, okay. Once that group uh, uh, is once that is complete, we invite um, everyone out that is still interested and has uh, all the criteria met. We invite them out for an orientation, and that it consists of uh, four hours uh, for four evenings, and uh, four hours each evening. And uh, we teach them to use measuring tools. Uh, we talk very heavily about safety. There's actually a safety document that they have to sign and agree to, uh, but they're going to do a little light machining for us. Uh, build a project. Uh, and then at the end of the week, they take a battery of tests. And uh, so we get to we get to assess uh, their mechanical abilities, their hand skills. Um, and then they get to assess us. They see us in a working environment. They see, uh, you know, how Siemens does things. And um, then they decide whether they want to continue in the program. Uh, the next step past that, uh, we take probably the top 10, uh, bring them out in the summer for a, a pre-apprenticeship. Uh, where they actually work out on the factory floor. We're going to pair them with one of our current apprentices and that apprentice's mentor, and they come to work every day, um, and we get to uh, um, observe them in the industrial environment in a multiracial, multigender, um, multigenerational environment, and um, we require that they take uh, two classes at the community college, um, basic safety classes and, a, uh, and an introduction to engineering and uh, they have a project that they have to complete as a group, so we get to in- observe them in the team environment. Um, so it's, it's a very long, competitive, um, difficult process uh, to get into the apprenticeship. That is incredibly impressive, I have to say. I mean, I was expecting something like a, you know, a, a written application that you hand in anonymously <laughs> and someone looks at and says, oh, this person looks good, but wow, that is, that's pretty intense. So. Yeah, we're going, we're going to invest um, a lot of money in these individuals. Yeah. And again, the expectation is they're going to pay back that investment in their increased productivity. But um, if, if they don't understand everything that is involved in, uh, in advanced manufacturing and everything that they're going to have to do to complete the program, they're likely not to pass. So that's why the, uh, the selection process is as difficult and as uh, intense as it is. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. You want to get the most the most qualified applicants and people who are the best fit, right? For probably for both parties, because even if you are have the skills but maybe not the drive and don't want to Absolutely. complete all those processes, it might not be the best fit for them either. Wow, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed by that. So, um, you you yourself have done an apprenticeship program. Was your uh, apprenticeship program as I don't know as rigorous as this? Was it? Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Is it <laughs> was was it as intense of a program to get into for you, or have have times changed? Is that is that just the nature of Siemens, or or? I think that the times have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, the apprenticeship that I graduated from is the Apprentice School at Newport News Shipbuilding, okay. and um, their model is slightly different. Uh, they bring on apprentices every month, and they have a uh, probationary period, and it's where they assess you, and you get to assess the company. And uh, if you think you want to stay, um, then you continue on in the program. Uh, whereas we just we do the same process, just a little bit differently. So we we like to do the uh, we we kind of consider the uh, probationary period up front, right. and. Uh, so we do a lot more research into the uh, uh, individuals ahead of time um, than we would uh, like in a, a probationary period. Okay. So um, 
it sounds like it's pretty competitive. Are you, do you have a hard time finding the number of applicants that it takes to narrow down to your your actual apprenticeship pool, or or is it is it is this something that people are really um, clamoring for that you're finding it's easy to find people interested in it? We've had some pioneers in apprenticeship in our area. Apprenticeship 2000 is one of them. And uh, so they've been around for about 20 years. So slowly the word has been getting out. Um, we've been doing apprenticeship presentations for, you know, 25 years now. Yeah. And uh, so the community in the area, they're, they're starting to understand what apprenticeship is. We've shown some successes and those successes have gone out into the community. And, um, and so they're our best advocates. So at, at this point in time, we have a lot more applicants than what we have spots for. Um, typically, we get uh, for our open house 80 to 100, and uh, we have to narrow those down to about maybe 20 spots. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of, uh, of competition. I mean, I can understand that it's such an excellent model for, um, you know, for everyone involved. It's a win for everyone. So I could see, I could see it being really appealing to someone who is maybe, you know, if your choices are going into an apprenticeship program like this with, um, with a highly regaled um, business such as Siemens or going into, um, say, like a community college or something like that where you're, you're trying to gain the skills, but you don't necessarily... Well, you're paying for it for one, or you don't have that, um, I don't know, that, that for sure uh, job that's lined up at the end. This is just such a, <clears throat> such a better bet for anyone involved, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, you know, I, I kind of market the apprenticeship as a stepping off point. Um, it's not going to be an end to your career. Uh, most of the companies that I work with, uh, when you graduate from the program, you're going to have a journeyman certification. You're going to have a two-year degree from the community college, um, either in mechatronics or computer integrated machining or, or whatever, depending on um, the industry that you're in. Um, but I can't think of any company that I work with that does not have a tuition reimbursement program. So once you complete the program and you have a full-time job, the company will continue to pay for you to go uh, uh, to go to college and you um, you know, you can go as high as you'd like to go. Uh, to me, the sky's the limit. It's it's a it's a stepping off point or a, or a springboard into the remainder of your career. Okay, that's pretty amazing. How how would someone make themselves look more favorable? How would they make themselves look a little bit more competitive with all of these applicants that are that are interested in a position with Siemens? Sure. Um, one of the things, one of our primary criteria is uh, is grade point average. So we, we're going to look at your high school transcripts or your college cr transcripts um, or your military training. And uh, so if you've already got a background in engineering, if you're taking engineering courses, science courses, math courses, um, that, that makes you uh, a better candidate for the program. Um, your grade point average has to be at least a 2.5 or above. And we've kind of uh, discerned that that. 2.5 threshold, anything above that, typically people are successful in the college environment. Below that, typically they are not. So that's kind of where the where our entry threshold is, is a 2.5 unweighted grade point average. Um, but you're going to, um, you know, you're going to go to college and, you know, you're going to, um, you're going to have to uh, study some very technically advanced uh, courses. Um, our job is not easy. It's not for underachievers. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we'd like to see is that um, uh, we've we'd like to see some mechanical ability. Uh, if you can come out and show us, you know that that you're good working with your hands and you have uh, spatial orientation uh, abilities and uh, some mechanical aptitude, that would definitely make you a better candidate. Okay. Do you, so you know I don't know if it's different in North Carolina, but where I was growing up, there was not a lot of emphasis on trades in the high school or, um, you know, it's just, it was very uh, much more book learning than, you know, hands-on, anything like that. I mean, there, there were, you know, like a couple, you know, different things you could do, but it was definitely wasn't mainstream to take any type of, you know, manufacturing skills or anything. Is Are, are the high schools in North Carolina focusing on, on any of these skills to help their high schoolers you know, get a leg up on this type of really important, important work? Or is that something that people, if they're interested, are having to do on their on their own time that you're finding? 
Yeah, for the most part, um, our schools are still in the uh, four-year university for all mentality. Uh, they've gotten away from um, the uh, the building sciences and the manufacturing sciences. Um, but we're showing some bright spots in North Carolina. Olympic High School is one of those. And uh, uh, we're finding that um, the, uh, uh, the school system and business partnership is really working well. So we've partnered with Olympic High School. Uh, Bosch Rexroth has partnered with Olympic High School, and they have an advanced manufacturing curriculum now. Right. And uh, that's really showing a lot of success a lot of promise for the future, and uh, we're noticing now that there are some school systems throughout North Carolina who are looking to duplicate that. Uh, so the movement, the, the tide is turning uh, back towards the uh, at least an equal opportunity with the uh, manufacturing trades and the uh, and the building trades. Uh, so we're seeing we're seeing some hope for the future in, in that regard. Excellent. That's good. I mean, yeah, and making those connections with the high schools is going to make a difference. I think. Absolutely. <clears throat> so most of it sounds like most of the apprenticeship programs that are being put on um, through Siemens at least are focused on manufacturing. Is that is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. So what what does the future manufacturing look like? Well, for the United States, since I guess we're in the United States here, because you know there's a lot of um, a lot of talk about manufacturing jobs going overseas or yes. going off to China. Is is this something that is that's still growing in the United States, or what? What does it look like as as a as a future job possibility for people interested? Well, manufacturing is definitely a viable option for a future career. Um, you know, we, we noticed that manufacturing for a long for a number of decades was leaving the United States and going throughout the world. And one of the things that we found was that we had quality issues uh, as shipping costs uh, continue to rise. It becomes um, uh, it's it's not really a, a feasible option to move manufacturing overseas. You need to do it as close to your uh, your business as possible. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of reshoring. We're uh, seeing manufacturing come back to the United States. Plus, it's growing. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we, we just don't have the interest uh, in the manufacturing sciences and the, the building sciences that we did at one time. And so we're noticing a very, um, we're short on those kind of workers. So that's why the apprenticeship initiative is, has kind of taken hold. Um, but uh, it's definitely growing. Um, you know, if you think about it, uh, if you pull the manufacturing piece uh, out of the U.S. economy. You know, it's made up of multiple sectors, but if you just pull manufacturing out, it's the eighth largest economy in the world. And um, it's just, uh, uh, it, it's an incredible opportunity for someone who is uh, maybe unsure about a career. Um, again, like I said before, it's a good starting point. You get a lot of, uh, of uh, technical skills, um, a lot of um, hands-on training. Uh, it, what we, the way we look at it at Siemens is uh, uh, where we start with the apprenticeship um, at the ground level and you're building those skills and that practical ability, it makes you a better employee no matter what direction you decide to go. If you decide to go into engineering or management, you have that practical baseline skill set. Yeah, that's excellent. I mean, yeah, from what I understand, it's a huge part. It is a huge part of our economy with the enormous percentage of workers that are involved in some capacity with manufacturing um, even though, you know, even though um, there, there are a lot of jobs and a lot of things that come from China, it, it is important to the United States here. Um, and so another question I had with respect to that was when some people think of manufacturing, they may um, have a different idea of what a manufacturing job looks like than maybe what it is. Can you explain if you take this apprenticeship program or if you're, you're working um, you know, to gather those skills in manufacturing, what what would your day to day job look like? Are you assembling things on the assembly line? Or are you are you doing something different? It's uh, it's definitely something different. Advanced manufacturing today, um, you know, the, uh, a lot of people, especially people my age, when they think of manufacturing, they think of the dirty, dark, and dangerous past. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I talked before about reshoring and bringing back, bringing manufacturing back to the United States. And I choose to, uh, to call it advanced manufacturing. And the reason is, is that manufacturing of old is gone. Um, in order to be competitive on the world market, we have to be better at it. And in, mm -hmm. in order to do that, we utilize um, technologically like robotics, pick and place machinery. Um, you know, there are uh, multiple avenues or multiple um 
uh, skill sets that need to be used. If you walk out on our factory floor, um, I hate to say it, but it's cleaner than the floors in my house. Um, so, you know, we, we maintain a clean, orderly environment. Um, we, uh, every, uh, every one of our machine tools has multiple computers. Uh, they're, they're technologically advanced, uh, computerized, uh, numerically controlled machines. Uh, so like I said before, you can't be an underachie- underachiever and be in manufacturing today. It's not for dummies. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think that perception for people who aren't familiar with the industry is maybe slow to change about what a manufacturing job looks like today versus, you know, what it was 100 years ago or whatever, 50 years Absolutely. ago even. So. And, and the it's not dangerous at all. Um, it's actually in our best interest. If we're going to be uh, competitive on the world market, we have to lower our costs. And part of our costs is, um, you know, paying for injured people, paying our insurance premiums and things like that. So it's in our best interest to be as safe as possible. Um, we've taken active measures and training measures to make sure that we have the safest workforce in the U.S. And uh, it actually uh, uh, is a savings for us as far as our insurance premiums go. Um, and, you know, just the the cost of, of uh, taking care of injured workers. Well, and I think you can tell too, just from your description of the, you know, intense process of applying for an apprenticeship program, how much your company actually cares about its employees that's willing to invest that much effort into finding the right people and in giving them the training that they need to do the job. I mean, that, that says a lot when in this day and age, you know, sometimes your workers are just kind of replaceable, but it sounds like it's not the case at Siemens, at least. That is absolutely true. Our uh, our technically advanced uh, skills here, our technically advanced employees are, are very difficult to replace. And uh, so we do our absolute best to make sure that they stay with us for a lifetime. That's great. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about what the apprenticeship program entails once you're in it, um, if that's okay. So what... Absolutely. Um, what, well, maybe I should start with, um, you know, just what are the day-to-day activities as an apprentice, as you're starting out, you mentioned that there's some, you know, schooling classes you go to safety that you have to understand, but what, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, what day-to-day activities you're going to be doing as an apprentice? Sure, absolutely. That's very similar to what our incumbent workforce goes through every day. So the, when they come in in the morning and they clock in, the first thing they're going to do is have a safety meeting. And uh, they're going to uh, talk about with their supervisors and mentors uh, what the job entails, go over anything um, that could cause a safety issue or a, or a production problem. Uh, we're going to try to identify that early on, and then we're going to go out to our work area. And um, we're, what we're doing is uh, we're machining uh, components for generators, combustion turbine engines, and steam turbine engines. Uh, so we'll pair that apprentice with a mentor, and uh, they'll, um, on the job, uh, right out on the shop floor, on the factory floor, they're going to learn our processes, product, and procedures. And um, they're going to learn uh, the everything that they need to know about the machining process and the machining science uh, from that mentor. Um, so uh, along with that on-the-job training, um, at least two days a week, they're going to spend at the local community college uh, studying either computer-integrated machining or uh, mechatronics. And uh, so that's a two-year associate's degree. And what we do in the confines of the program, um, our apprenticeship program is 8,000 hours or it's four years long. And uh, so we take that two year degree and we stretch it over three and a half. And the idea is that um, when they go to college, uh, the, the subjects that they study on a, uh, on a weekly basis, they're going to bring what they've learned back to the factory floor and be able to apply it. Yeah, great. And you're, you're learning alongside in the classroom alongside what you're doing on the on the floor so you can integrate it and your knowledge is a little bit more connected there. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Precisely. Okay. So, um, also you, paired with a seasoned professional. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, um, many of our mentors have 20, 25, 30 years of experience uh, in the machining sciences. And uh, so uh, that, that transfer of knowledge is invaluable. Is it, is it a one-to-one pairing, or is one of these mentors responsible for multiple people that they're training, or, or is, it a, is it a one-to-one? It's a one-to-one pairing. Okay. Um, how many people do you generally take into each batch of, a, of apprenticeships? Is, there, is it kind of an ongoing rolling thing, or do you, yeah? It is. The, the system is designed, our, our program is designed to bring on six new apprentices every year, um, okay. but... 
that's just a guideline. Uh, what we do is we take a look at our production numbers and uh, what our forecast looks like um, you know, for a few years out, and then we decide how many apprentices we're going to take. So we've taken as many as seven apprentices in a year and as little as four, just okay. depending on our, on our workload. And is that is that number specific to your location in North Carolina, or is that across the board? Because you mentioned there are several regions where you may take apprenticeships in with Siemens across the country. Yes, that number is specific to Siemens Charlotte. Okay. Uh, each individual site that runs their individual programs are uh, they're going to they're going to look at their production numbers okay. and and they'll decide on their own. But the uh, but the uh, number of six is is specific to Siemens Charlotte. Okay, that's. That makes sense. Um, so you get in this program, you're doing all this work, and hopefully you're a great fit because because of the you know the winnowing process that happened before selecting apprenticeships. What um, what happens to you uh, as an apprentice as you go along? Do most people stay in? Is your completion rate pretty high? Are you are you offered a job after you're done? What what happens once you're solidly in that program? It, just like with anything, it's a, uh, a work in progress. Uh, so every year we identify areas where we can be better uh, at the apprenticeship program and administering the program. Um, we are uh, we're at about 75% retention um, and we're over 90% post-graduation retention. Um, unfortunately, life happens. Um, all of our graduates have been here. We've only lost one and it was because of a life event. Um, individual got married and, and, and moved to another state. So uh, it's one yep. of those things that would happen whether they were an apprentice graduate or not. Um, but um, even as rigorous as our selection process is, uh, we still have individuals who, um, who may not uh, over time <clears throat> prove to be a good fit. Yeah. Well, that happens, I think, with anyone. Sure, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, so are you... Once you finish your apprenticeship program, does it continue on to a um, like a regular job? I guess with with Siemens, is that guaranteed after you're done with your apprenticeship program, or do you have to reapply for something like that? Well, um, you're a Siemens employee when you graduate from the program. Okay. Um, so you're classified as a Siemens apprentice, and um, as jobs come available, um, then you're uh, put in a position where you can apply for that job internally. Um, okay with the remainder of the workforce. Okay, gotcha. Um, and what what does your pay look like? Because you, as you're an apprentice, you get paid, which is an amazing bonus uh, for, for getting that training. What does is, what is your starting pay look like as you start out with an apprenticeship program? And what can it transition to as you move on to more of that, that full-time work with Siemens? Sure. Our, um, our apprenticeship program... The pay scale for the program is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's based on um, a general statute uh, in the North Carolina uh, law. So, a, uh, a starting apprentice has to make at least fifty percent of what an entry level journey machinist would make at our company. Um, their fourth year, they have to be making at least eighty five percent of what an entry level journey worker would make. So, um, uh, they're they're paid very well. Yeah, they're going to graduate the program. Uh, their first job out of the gate is going to be somewhere around fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Okay, that's pretty good for you know for coming out of the program. That's great. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, um, are you seeing other um, other companies in the area who might be interested in either manufacturing or um, I don't know if it's something similar or not? Looking more toward this apprenticeship model, do you think that? Um, other employee employers are being swayed by this by this model in your area. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm seeing it personally, um, and so along with uh, getting the word out for students and people interested in becoming an apprentice, we also work uh, on the other end um, by um, uh, we talk to different manufacturers and or different companies and uh, talk to them about apprenticeship and how apprenticeship can um, solve their workforce difficulties. Um, so again, I work on the state level and the national level. Um, we, we have um, uh, employer forums all the time. We'll bring anywhere from 20 to 50 employers in a local area and we'll talk about apprenticeship and, and how it can benefit them. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, 
uh, we're definitely reaching out and I'm definitely seeing an increase uh, in manufacturers, well, not just manufacturers, but in businesses interested in, in apprenticeship. Uh, we've, uh, we're working in the state of North Carolina right now. We've just recently gotten a grant and um, we are uh, looking to move into IT, healthcare, and, uh, and logistics. Okay. And you are, um, I'm going to not remember the, the, the title of what you said, but you were working at an apprenticeship council of some, of some sort. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Chairman, <laughs> chairman of the North Carolina Apprenticeship Council. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, part of that state law uh, that, that I was referred to earlier, uh, it's it, uh, concerning apprenticeship, is that uh, we have to have an advisory council. And it's made up of employers, of people from the educational systems, not just the K-12 system, but the college system as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a council, and uh, we're basically advisory, uh, uh, an advisory council uh, for the legislature. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and you, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So, <laughs> All right. Um, so you are working um, a lot with North Carolina. Do you think North Carolina is different than other other states in the country? Is it seeing more of this this push toward um, toward uh, uh, apprenticeship programs than than other states? Are you kind of leading the way with this? Is that is that something you're seeing, or is this kind of across the board in in our country? We're seeing it uh, as an across the board uh, initiative. North Carolina, I would really like to see North Carolina as a leader, and I think that we're doing uh, a lot in that regard. Um, but apprenticeship is definitely a, uh, it's a, it's a nationwide initiative. And uh, in my meetings in Washington, D.C., uh, concerning apprenticeship and other council chairs throughout the nation, uh, we're seeing a, a, a boom in interest. So, um, okay. yeah, we're, now some states are better at it than others, of course. You yeah. know, I think North Carolina, we have a much, uh, we have a very good structure. Uh, as far as uh, our legislature is concerned and, and state law um, uh, concerning apprenticeship, there are other states that maybe uh, have a different model, um, but showing, you know, no less success. Uh, so it's it's definitely a movement. Great. Okay. Um, so with all these different possible apprenticeships um, that are popping up, what would make Siemens more attractive to someone else? than um, other possible apprenticeships? Or what, what would make Siemens a, a really great place to work at? Well, Siemens, again, it's, it's a worldwide company. We have uh, somewhere around 250,000 employees in 190 countries. Uh, here in the U.S., we employ uh, right around 50,000. Um, and Siemens has at least one facility in every state in the nation. Um, and here locally, um, we, uh, we employ about 1,800 people here at our uh, Siemens factory. Um, you get a lot of satisfaction uh, out of what you do, but the opportunities are endless. Uh, an apprentice graduate here uh, can utilize the tuition reimbursement funds that are available to them, continue their education into management, uh, engineering, um, just in, in any direction that they want to go and be able to find an opportunity somewhere within the Siemens network. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. It sounds like they're, especially with such a large with such a large company, there are uh, infinite amount of directions you could go if you're really interested in, in going that direction. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, are you seeing um, are your are you seeing that your workforce in general is starting to get um, is starting to age, is getting a little bit older, or are you seeing that there's an influx of people who are interested in this type of work? I think the reason that we started apprenticeship was that there are a lack of people interested in this kind of work, and uh, as our as our workforce ages, um, we're finding that the replacing those people is uh, uh, nearly impossible, and uh, so that's part of the reason that the apprenticeship was started. Uh, we decided that we were going to start building that pipeline of uh, of qualified workers internally. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's uh, there's definitely a lack of interest in in, uh, in manufacturing sciences. That's really unfortunate. What do you, what do you, th can you solve all the world's problems? I mean, like, what do you think is going to be the, sorry, I realized as I was saying, this maybe my question is a little <laughs> too, uh, asking too much, but what do you think is going to, is going to solve that? Do you think apprenticeship is going to be the model to, to change people's mindsets, to, to get them more interested in this as a, as a viable career option? Or how, I would, how do I would change definitely. Minds?
would only agree with that statement. Um, <laughs> basically, and, and I, like I said before, once we show successes and they go out in the community and uh, mm-hmm. um, not just internally with our success with apprenticeship, but, uh, you know, as they go out in the community and they talk about what they've done and they talk about their background and uh, talk about apprenticeships, we're going to start to see the interest grow. Um, I have, I, I got a text from one of my apprentices this morning. He's taking a half a day of vacation today so he can go sign the paperwork to purchase a home and he's 20 years old. Um, so um, the, those are the kinds of things that we're going to see as they, as they move out in the community and they purchase homes and start families in their early 20s. Um, you know, making, uh, um, like I said, a minimum of $55,000 a year, Mm -hmm. Uh, people are going to see that and they're going to want to know what path they took to get there. And I think that's one of the primary ways that apprenticeship or um, or not just apprenticeship, but manufacturing as a whole that is going to grow or the interest in in that. That's great. I think, you know, I think it's going to take a while because we have this entrenched mindset of there being one, (laughs) one pathway to success. But, uh, but you're right, with examples that people see, you know, it, it starts sparking that, that idea that, you know, you can find other pathways or that you can, you can go toward this work that's blue collar and it, it, it pays well and it's satisfying work and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you where you want to be in life. So that's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, Roger, th- those are all the questions that I have for you today, but I really appreciate you coming on the show and... Um, sharing your story and describing more about what the Siemens program looks like and and hopefully inspiring other people to consider apprenticeships or to consider this type of manufacturing work. So thank you. Great. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Um, it's always fun to, to let my wife uh, do the interviews or uh, her step up and do the interviews. That's Bugs everywhere, flying around the house. Anyway, um, <laughs> so it's really, really awesome just to see my wife be able to do do these interviews and, and really help out with the podcast. So um, one big thing, one call to action that we'd love for you guys to take is we want to help you guys out, right? So this pod- podcast is, is for you guys as well. So the big thing here is can you please tell us what we can do to, to essentially be better, right? So... Um, are there particular areas or particular uh, careers or job occupations that you guys want us to, to interview? Or are there various other mediums that you think would be great for us to start exploring, i.e. maybe speaking at schools or maybe exploring conferences, etc., right? Um, anything and everything, any ideas that will help us help you um, are greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, So as always, guys, um, stay safe, have fun, guys, and uh, until next week, later.